Hello, my name is Paul Craig, and I'm one of the hosts for the IQV Crash Course Python Scripting for Molecular Docking. I'm also a chemistry professor at the Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York, where my research is focused on computational biochemistry. This includes developing Python scripting for biochemistry problems, including molecular docking. The purpose of this video is to help you prepare for the crash course, which will be held on Thursday, July 18th at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's Eastern time in the U.S. Uh, there will be office hours on Monday, July 15th that you can attend. But if you're able to complete all the steps in the preparation document, you should be ready for the full workshop on Thursday, July 18th. You should have already received a link to the preparation document from Rutgers, and hopefully you're just following along. I'll bring the preparation guide up now on my screen. I encourage you to follow along. And we'll be reviewing the three steps that you'll need to consider to prepare for the crash course. <clears throat> The first part of the preparation guide includes a little bit of text, but the primary thing is that there's a seven-step process with a computing environment that you're going to be using for the crash course. And the environment you use depends on whether you're from an academic institution or from another organization. If you're from an academic institution, you'll need to use your .edu email to register for Chem Compute, and I'll review that next. <clears throat> if you're from another organization, you'll need to use GitHub code spaces. And I'll talk about that after we look at Kemp Compute. Then we'll look at a few issues that might arise with browsers. And finally, we'll be using Discord for our discussions and questions and answers in the crash course. And I will share a link where you can download Discord for your computer, your tablet, or your phone. And also, there will be a link forthcoming for a Discord channel that we're going to open up for the chats in the crash course that's not ready quite yet. <clears throat> On the first page of the preparation guide, we have a little bit of descriptive information. And then there are two links to previous crash courses we taught about Python scripting for biochemistry and molecular biology. If you haven't done any coding at all or very little coding in Python, I would encourage you to take the time to go through those. It's going to take about eight to 10 hours to do that. But if you do that, you'll become much more familiar with the approach we use and with the Jupyter Lab environment that we'll be working in. There were four sections of the document that are listed here. Let me make it just a little bit bigger on the screen. Okay, there are four sections of the document that we list here. Now, the first one is setting up an account at chemcompute.org, and this is for users with an academic email address. And next is starting a GitHub code space, and this is for users with a corporate or other non-academic email account. The third section is a brief one on browsers for the crash course. And the fourth section is, again, a brief section on Discord server for the crash course. So we'll start by looking at setting up an account at chemcompute.org. This is for academic users. So if you're an academic user, you should start by clicking on this link to where it says go to registration link. And it brings you to this page, which is the registration page for for Chem Compute. Now, I'm already in Chem Compute. The system knows me very well. Uh, and so if I click this link, it's probably going to just take me directly uh, to my uh, Chem Compute homepage. Um, if you click on this, you'll get a menu which enables you to choose your university. If your university is on that list, you can then log in with your us university username and password. If your university is not on that list, then you should use the box on the left where it says sign up. And you would put in your academic email under the email slot. Uh, you create a username and a password. Make sure these are unique. These are not for your academic institution. These are unique to this, pro to this project. And so uh, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on the log in uh, with your university uh, email. And when I do that, as I mentioned, it takes me directly uh, to that spot. And you, I don't know if you can see it on the Zoom screen, but in the upper right-hand corner, it says Paul's dashboard. All right. So once you've done that, 
you'll need to log into Kevin Compute. Um, and I'm already at that point. But using the username and password you created, there might be an email you need to respond to to authorize the account. Uh, so if that's the case, then you should go to email and, and do that. Okay. Once you've logged in, uh, step three is once you've logged in, you're going to see this screen. And on this screen, what we want to do is hover over the Jupyter dropdown or Jupyter here in a dropdown menu appears and then select clone a GitHub repo to your notebook. And that brings up uh, this link. And so step one on this page is log into Camp Compute, which we've already done. Step two is start a notebook instance that uh, and then return to this tab. Now mine says done lab started because I've already been in here recently. Uh, so uh, if we take a look at the preparation document, what's gonna happen the first time you go in and log into Camp Compute and you select clone a GitHub repo, then you click on Start Notebook, it's shown here with the red arrow. This is under step three. And under step four, you're going to see uh, the server option window will appear. And so you need to go into this window, and the only thing you need to touch is indicated by the red arrow. You go to this drop, the second drop down box, and select Jupyter Lab. Once you do that, click on the Start button. And once you, and there'll be a screen that shows you that it's starting up a, a Jupyter Hub for you. And once you do that, you can return to that first page and it's gonna have this done lab started button, uh, which we see right here. The next step is to enter the URL for the repo uh, that you're going to clone. So this is a repository on GitHub. So if I go to the preparation document, that URL is listed right here. So I'm gonna copy that. And I paste it into this box. And we don't need to enter anything in this box. And this box, it says optional, choose between Jupyter Notebook default or Jupyter Lab. And you should choose Jupyter Lab if it's not already selected. And then you hit the clone repo button. And an error message appears. And the error message says, ignore the error message that the path can't be found. So it's starting the repo. And I'm getting an error message here because it thinks I already have this notebook. Let me take a minute to correct this. All right, I fixed that little issue. And so now I've got the GitHub repo, repo cloned and a message comes up that says path not found. You can simply ignore this message. So I'm just gonna hit the dismiss button on it. And at this point, um, the repo is uh, is in there. Now, my, my uh, interface at Chem Compute looks a little bit different from yours because I've used it for some other projects. But notice there's a folder here called iqb-2024.get. That's the one that really matters, all right? And so, um, now if you've, if you've gotten this far, you're ready to do the crash course. Uh, and there's a couple more instructions that we need to follow when you come back here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this window. All right. Uh, and uh, and when you come back to this place or to, to when you open your com computer account on Thursday for the workshop, you'll come into the Jupyter tab again. But this time you go, you click on use Sci4 or Jupyter Hub. When you click on that. It's going to uh, launch something. It might give an error, but it's going to bring you to your notebook. So that's what you need to do. So for the workshop on Thursday, again, come to uh, Chem Compute, uh, look at uh, go to Jupyter, and then use this. Uh, click on Use Sci4 or Jupyter Hub, and it should bring you to this space. So that will put you in good shape for the work for the crash course. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is working with code spaces, all right? So I'm back in the preparation document now. And once again, the preparation document contains all these details. Uh, so if there's a part of the video where I went a bit too fast to stop the video and go back and use the preparation document. All right, so I'm gonna start a GitHub code space. The first thing you need to do, and, and this is for people with, um, who are part of other organizations, non-academic organizations. 
And you need to set up a GitHub account if you don't already have one and sign in. So if we click on this link to join GitHub, um, you'll have the opportunity to set up an account. Now, I'm already on GitHub, so it just takes me right to my page, all right? Uh, and so uh, the account is set up. The, the second step in this process then is to navigate to the IQB 2024 repository using the link shown in step two here. So if I click on this link, it's gonna take me to that repository. So the next thing we're gonna do is start a GitHub code space. And the, the preparation document includes nice detail on this. Uh, and so with the with three steps you need to take, we're gonna follow those right now. Make sure I'm in the right tab. Okay, here we go. So you go to the code button on uh, the page you just opened up. And you have two options here. One is local, the other one is code spaces. Now I've already started a code space. And so I'm going to actually stop that and pause the recording for a moment here. And then I'll have then I'll start up a new one. So you'll see exactly what all right. So here we are on that page on GitHub. And this is the page that Jessica Nash created. She's the co-presenter uh, here. Uh, and it's called, you can see it says IQB 2024 at the top. We click on the code button and we have two options here, local and code spaces. And the default actually is local. So you'll need to click on the code spaces tab. That's the second thing. The third thing is you click on create code space on main. So it's setting up a code space now. And what's actually happening here is it's setting up a Visual Studio code interface to the code space. We won't be using that, but we have to start at once to start the code space. And so this is taking a few seconds and it's starting to build things and soon it'll start adding uh, files and folders uh, to this space. Uh, and I'm going to pause it here for, pause for a moment and I'll come back uh, when that is done. So this is the fully set up Visual Studio code, uh, code interface for code spaces. We're not going to use this, okay? It does, it shows you the readme file, for example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the top of this page. I'm actually gonna close that tab and we're gonna go back here. Now notice it says opening in code spaces. We're gonna refresh this page and go down here and look and notice now it says, Probable space xylophone. These code spaces are given uh, odd names, but that's okay. So this is the place you need to come back to for the workshop or for the, for the crash course on Thursday. So the next step in this process is actually step six in the, in the preparation document under code spaces. We click, notice the three dots here. So we, once again, we click code code spaces, and we click the three dots next to our code space. Mine's called probable space xylophone. And I get a drop down menu, and I want to open in Jupyter Lab. And so it's setting up my code space in Jupyter Lab. And hopefully it'll work right. If it doesn't work right, we'll just close this window and try again. Now uh, this is, if you, if you look at that menu, it says beta next to Jupyter Lab. And so sometimes things go, uh, don't work and you have to try again. And once again, the instructions and the steps in this process are all in the preparation document. So now we've got the Jupyter Lab open. And this is where you want to be uh, when you start the crash course. Okay. And so when you come back to this, um, when you come back to GitHub and you just, you know, you come to the preparation document on Thursday, you click on this link, then what's going to happen? your computer will remember that you have that code space. You just come here, click on code spaces, and then you can just click on uh, on the three buttons and open in Jupyter Lab, and you'll be and and that'll bring up the interface. You'll be ready to go. Perfect. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now.
I just wanted to make some comments about browser and about browser use and about the Discord server. So you'll be running Jupyter Notebooks for this crash course from a browser on your desktop. If you can open the Jupyter Notebooks in your default browser, yeah, for either chemcompute.org or GitHub Code Spaces, you're all set. If there's a problem with loading in either case, simply try a different browser. I found that Code Spaces would not work in Firefox on, on my laptop. And so I switched to Chrome and it worked fine on Chrome. And I just remembered that I forgot to show one more thing that's important um, when we do the Code Spaces. So I'm going to go back there. All right. And I'm going to close this tab again. I'm going to go in here and under our under our code space, we need a little bit more juice in terms of the computing power. So what we're going to do is once again we go to code. We look at our uh, our code space. Go to the three dots, and we select change machine type. When we do that, the default is a two core, eight uh, gigabytes of RAM, six or uh, thirty two gigabytes. I'm going to click this button to go four core, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes, and then click on a button that says update, uh, update code space. Okay. I'm not sure if you have to do this each time we're going to use the code space uh, or not, but I would encourage you to do this before we do this, uh, before the crash course on Thursday. And then you go in again, open in Jupyter Lab, and it'll set up your code space. You'll be ready to go. All right, the last thing I wanted to mention was about using Discord. We're gonna be using a Discord server for the questions and answers and for the chat for the crash course on Thursday due to the large number of participants. To use the Discord server, you'll need to install Discord on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. To do that, you can go to the link in the preparation document. Uh, it's uh, https colon slash slash discord.com and then download the app for your device. Uh, and when I down, went to download it for my uh, laptop, my MacBook, uh, I just knew what I needed. Um, for iPhone users, you need to go to the App Store. For Android users, you need to go to Google Play. Once you've done that, you'll need to set up a, a, an account on Discord. And then we'll be sending a link out for the Discord server before the workshop, um, probably at least a day or two before the workshop, and, and maybe even by Monday, July 15th. I hope you found this helpful. And once again, I encourage you to use that preparation document uh, and the preparation document, let me make sure I, I have exactly the name of that document so you'll know uh, uh, what it's called. It's called Preparing for the Molecular Docking Crash Course. And uh, that's it. Uh, and uh, good luck. I look forward to seeing you. Um, some of you may need to come to the office hour on Monday. Hopefully most of you will be able to complete this, these tasks without the office hour. Um, because there's a lot of folks. Uh, and then I uh, hope to see all of you on Thursday.